Hi everyone. Uh, so what we're going to do today is do a quick review of our properties of matter unit because on Monday you're going to have an assessment that goes over properties of matter. So I've got a quick little slideshow I'm going to go through here to just kind of review some of this with you. So as we look at properties of matter, remember that physical property is uh, something that is a trait about an object that can change without changing the original substance. And that's the important part with that one, is that the original substance stays the same, it doesn't change at all, okay? Our chemical property, if you remember, is a trait that causes it to change into a new substance. So we're either chemically breaking it apart or chemically combining it with something else to create a whole new substance. So for example, our physical property we might talk about the color of a metal or something like that, the color of a substance. Um, chemical property might be the fact that a metal reacts with acid, and when it reacts with the acid, it's changing into a new substance, okay? And then the other one, the last one here, which is kind of an important one for us to be thinking about and remembering, is the idea of a characteristic property, right? And a characteristic property is one that is specific to a substance. In other words, it, it can be used to identify the substance, and it remains the same under standard conditions. Okay, and what that means is that a characteristic property does not change if we have the same substance. So whether you have um, two grams of that substance or two thousand grams of that substance, the characteristic property stays the same, right? Okay, the classic example of that is density. We've, we've looked at density, we've talked about density, we'll review it more here in a minute. But if I take the density of a sample of a substance, it doesn't matter if I use a two gram sample or if I use a 2000 gram sample, I should get the same density for both of those because density is, that density is unique or intrinsic to that particular substance, right? Water has a density of 1.0 grams per milliliter. Doesn't matter if I'm, measuring one liter of water or if I'm measuring an entire lake full of water it's always going to be that one gram per milliliter okay physical change right remember that this is much like our physical property a physical change is when we change the substance but we don't change the makeup of the substance the molecules that make it up don't change it's just we change something about its physical appearance. We change its size, we change its shape, we change what phase it is, right? If I take water and I freeze it to become ice, I've changed it from a liquid to a solid, but it's still water. It's just now in solid form. That's a physical change, right? Chemical change, okay? Here, we are changing place, we are changing the makeup of the molecules that make up that substance. We're taking our water and we're breaking it apart so it becomes hydrogen and oxygen. Or we are taking our metal and reacting it with acid so that it is no longer a metal. It's now some other material. When we have a chemical change take place, there are usually some sort of signs that tell us the chemical change has taken place. Okay, so for example, we put a solid into, we put a metal into an acid, we can see gas bubbles being released. So there were no bubbles before. When we mix the two, now there's bubbles, okay? Light produced, same thing. There was no light showing up. We mix them, now there's light, right? Um, exothermic reaction, so it loses heat, okay? What that means is that, um, you know, it's, um, giving off heat when it does that. So if you feel it, it feels warm to the touch. An endothermic reaction, heat absorption, it takes in heat. It requires heat to have that, that reaction occurring. So if you feel it, it's gonna feel cold because it's drawing heat out of your hand, okay? Oxidation, that would be rust or tarnish. So if we see metal rusting, um, burning, okay? If there's flames, things like that. Those are all signs that a chemical change has occurred. Okay, getting into our specifics here. Density is the big characteristic property that we've talked about so far, right? It's a measure of the amount of mass per unit of volume. So usually it's in either 
grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter, depending on what we measured our volume with, right? Okay, um, we have a couple different ways we can look at it. We can use our density circle here, okay? Um, so we have this density circle right here where we say M over DV, and the idea is that that allows us to sort of manipulate it, and we can say, well, if I have the mass and the volume, I can do mass divided by volume, I get the density. Or if I have the mass and the density, I can do mass divided by density, it'll give me volume. If I have the density and the volume, then I can do density times volume, and it will give me the mass. We also have the formula here, density equals mass divided by volume. We can rearrange that so that it becomes mass equals density times volume, or volume equals mass divided by density. You should be familiar with how to work with this and be able to calculate mass, volume, or density based on the data that you've been given. Remember that when we're doing this, mass is typically in grams. Volume is typically in either milliliters or in cubic centimeters. And remember that for the cubic centimeters, oftentimes you will need to calculate that volume based on the dimensions of a cube or a rectangle. So pay attention to that when you look at various problems. And then finally, density, either in grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Okay. Real quickly, if we think back to this density of solids lab we did, remember when we used these five different cylinders and we looked at these? Oops, sorry, there we go. Couple of quick things. Okay, so cylinder number one was our shortest. Cylinder number five was our longest. Okay, um, so here's a little table of sort of the results we got from that. Okay, let me move my picture up here out of the way so that you can see a little better. Um, we have some densities we calculated. This is all based on sort of class data that was collected. And then we have some physical characteristic, uh, some physical properties, excuse me, like color and magnetism. Because we can look at the color or test the magnetism without changing the substance. However, color is not necessarily a characteristic property. We might use it to help us identify something, but it's not a given. Magnetism is a characteristic property, right? That's unique to that substance, okay? It doesn't matter how much you have of it or whatever. If it's that substance, if it's magnetic, it's going to stay magnetic. If it's non-magnetic, it will not be magnetic, okay? Reactivity with hydrochloric acid, that's a chemical property. And again, it's characteristic. It doesn't matter if I have a small sample of the metal or a really large sample. It will still be reactive or non-reactive with acid. And then finally, the type of metal, the identification, and the um, known densities. So you can see how our calculated densities compared with the known densities. Okay? All right. So next thing, the density of liquids lab that we just finished up. Okay? This is what your two graphs should look like. Right? You should have two different lines, one for liquid A and liquid B with volume versus mass, okay? And what you should see here is as the volume is increasing, the mass is also increasing, okay? That seems pretty straightforward. This one here, you gotta pay attention to, right? These flat lines like this, what are they showing you? Okay, this one is volume versus density. So what it's showing you is that as the volume increases, as you change the volume of your liquid, the density stays exactly the same. That is indicative that density is a characteristic property. Okay. All right, last little bit, quick little density thing here. Um, so one of the cool things about density is if you have liquids that don't mix with each other, you can have they can actually separate out based on their density. So what we have here is we have hexane or C6H11 which floats on top of water, okay, H2O, which in turn floats on top of carbon tetrachloride, CCl4, okay? And this is based on the density, right? The more dense a, subject, uh, a, a liquid is, the further down it will sink. The lighter the density, the more it will float up. So in this case, hexane is less dense than water, so it floats on top of it. 
Water is less dense than carbon tetrachloride, so it floats on top of that. Okay, so these are all kind of things that I want you to be thinking about and aware of and reviewing to be ready for your assessment on Monday. As you go through this, as you've watched this, if you have any questions, please let me know uh, in the video chat or on email so that I can answer questions, go over stuff for you. Have a good day.